is useful sometimes to um, look around you. The people that are around you, I'll probably do it today because I'm going to go out shopping. And uh, just remember that everybody you see is damaged. There will be no exceptions. Uh, the damage can come from various places. Parents, bastard parents, are one of the main sources of damage. You know, of course, the, the parents don't have to be deliberately um, damaging, but they they might damage by telling you that you are a wonderful little thing, and that nothing you do is ever wrong or inadequate. And so when you get out into the world, the world doesn't see you like that. So you are suddenly in a lot of pain. You know, equally, if a parent tells you that you're a useless piece of crap um, for 10 or 15 years, then um, you go out, you're going to go out into the world feeling that you're inadequate all the time. This is the nature of life. Um, life, uh, as I've said before, is really only concerned with two things that you survive and procreate or help others procreate. You know, you can say, well, what about gay people and so on? Well, evolutionary psychology has found that gay people very often take a lot of interest in their um, nephews and nieces. They help the the rearing process go along. Uh, that's all life really cares about. The amount of psychological damage you suffer along the way is of no concern to life. So it has to be your concern. So, in a word, we're all fucked up. It's worth bearing that in mind. It's worth bearing in mind that you are damaged goods. As am I. As, if, as is everyone you will meet. Plato put it a little bit differently. He said that everyone struggles and is worthy of some kindness. Well, forget about the, you know, worthy of some kindness, but you don't want to heap that responsibility on yourself. But everyone does struggle. Or to put it in my language, everyone's fucked up. <coughs> it's the nature of life to be brutal. And your damaged state is a result of that brutality, as is mine. So, bastard parents. Maybe a parent putting you down, maybe a constant atmosphere of violence. I know that one. Um, maybe some kind of threat that never materialized but was always there. Because you know, children are very sensitive to that kind of thing. You're going to grow up fucked up. Um, partners, you know, later in life. You meet someone, maybe, that you think a lot of, feel a lot for, and they treat you badly. There's all kinds of reasons that something like that happens, but the net result is that you can be damaged by it. You know, maybe you think that someone cares about you deeply and you care about them deeply and which is all kind of a mistake but these are the kind of things we do um, only to find that they were only interested because you're a good earner or because you had particularly good boobs or you know something trivial so partners can really stick the knife in in um, 
2004, I spent a year travelling around Europe in a, an RV. <coughs> One of the most distressing things about it was meeting men from the United Kingdom. You may or may not know that the United Kingdom has, uh, as far as women are concerned, the best laws in the world. Men will get fucked over royally in the courts in the UK. As you might have seen by the... Uh, King or whatever he is of Dubai. Uh, his wife went to the UK for the divorce because the the preference for women is so strong. Anyway, I met a lot of men in uh, camper vans or RVs, whatever you want to call them, campers, who hadn't paid for them. They just bought it on higher purchase or credit and then disappeared into Europe. Um because that's all they had after their divorce. The wife had got the house and the money and all the rest of it. They had nothing. Couldn't even afford to buy an RV. Some of them were, you know, they weren't kind of down and out. So, so some that I met were teachers, uh, professional people, professional men, totally fucked up for life. You know, on the point of tears when they were talking about how their family had treated them. Life doesn't care. <laughs> They've done their job. Providing the money and the environment for the kids to be raised, the nesting environment. And once that had been served, or largely served, um, the state then took everything off them. I know quite a lot about that. So, bastard parents, bastard partners. You know, teachers at school. Humiliating you. Might not happen so much these days, but when I was a young boy. It was a standard thing for teachers to humiliate kids. It was horrible. And of course we have society at large that will try to um, mould you in a certain way so that you are you offer the greatest utility all of this will damage you this is not damage you can um, miraculously get rid of if it was physical you'd basically be walking around with crutches, an eye missing, you know, maybe a gash in your side, a hand missing. You can't magically make those things go away because it's psychological. We think that we can somehow magic the damage away and we can't. I saw um, <laughs> my favourite person to knock saw Rupert Spira talking to a young girl uh, she was she was in the audience his audience and um, she said something to the effect of why does God uh, make it so that some people only live for a short period of time now the kind thing to have done would have been what Gorjeff did when a woman asked him a similar question or the Buddha. So uh, a woman came to Gorjev, her son and her husband had been killed in either the revolution or a war. And she said, what is the meaning of it all? What is the sense of it all? And Gorjev just said, there is no sense and there is no meaning. And apparently, uh, a sense of relief came over her. And you probably heard the story of the Buddha, the woman who, whose son was dying, came pleading to the Buddha, <coughs> please heal my son, he's dying. So the Buddha took, around, uh, took her around the local town and showed her a hundred other people who were dying. She said, this is the way it is. And the woman was relieved. But no, Rupert Spira tries to talk spiritual bullshit to this guy, and she, you know, he, sorry, to this girl, and she just seems to become more and more distressed. 
Anyway, so, um, we're all fucked up. This is early in the morning, I can just hear the stirrings of my wife. <laughs> um, I'm just going to pause this a minute. So, we, um, we're in a very, we're all of us in a very, very damaged condition. And it causes pain. And the pain is made worse by one truly wicked overriding factor that we are told that we should be other than we are by fucking religions and spiritual people and even society. You know, if you're not in some kind of perfect psychological state, then take some fucking tablets. That is the wickedest thing of all. You know, love your neighbour. Well, I don't want to love my fucking neighbour. Uh, exercise loving kindness. Look, we're damaged. We hardly have enough love for ourselves, let alone our neighbour. And there's a key to a great deal. Anyway, I don't want this to be a 40 minute job. <laughs> 20 minutes if I can manage it. So, important point. You are damaged. It's okay for you to be damaged. I mean, it's not okay in the sense of you will be in pain, but do not listen to any religious, spiritual, self-help, psychological, societal influences that try to tell you you should be other than how you are. I was the angriest fuck on the planet 20 years ago. It was all over my face. People were frightened of me. I'm a big guy, six foot three. These days, I can't really remember the last time I got angry. Why? Why? Why did that change come about? Because I accepted it instead of fighting against it. I remember, I'm not going to explain all of this, but I remember being in a, what was called a co-meditation with someone. You know, Mr. Angry staring at them. <coughs> and I could see they were struggling. Co-meditation is when two people sit opposite each other, basically just look each other in the eyes for, you know, whatever, 10, 15 minutes. And afterwards, this guy who was very experienced in it said, that's the hardest co-meditation I've ever done. <laughs> that's what I was like. So, along comes uh, Spinoza and says that his mission is to help ridders of the sad passions. Not make us better people or anything like that. Just to help us with the sad passions. Because the sad passions are a pain. You know, melancholy. We used to suffer from terrible melancholy. Hatred. Hatred is a natural state. Read Leopardi. You know, Spinoza does do his goody good. Well, well, whatever, goody two-shoes bit about all of this. But he is fairly objective about hatred. If something diminishes your uh, power, you're going to hate it. Well, almost everybody around you is trying to diminish your power. <laughs> Read Leopard. Well, I've covered Leopardi before, but... Hatred's perfectly normal. Hate every fucker. Anger. Anger is cleansing. 
whatever you do, don't try and diminish your anger. Just make you more angry. Anger is cleansing. It's a natural process. You're trying to destroy the thing that is causing you pain. I mean, if you break the law, then you're in for some trouble, probably. But nonetheless, anger is cleansing. And to be honest about your anger. You know, I hate that fucking person. And then we have the old favourites of guilt and shame and remorse. These things, you know, they used to talk, didn't they? Um, about people being possessed by demons. These things are like demons. You know, I've mentioned before, I spent a couple of weeks in Ireland doing some Gestalt training. Shame was like uh, an, an epidemic. You know, all these beautiful young women beautiful young women wanting to learn about Gestalt, but who are absolutely riddled with shame. And so, it's really, really important that you have some self-compassion. Rena Hans was very big on this. Self-compassion. I've been knocked about by life I'm damaged and you know this sounds a bit you have to feel it in yourself you know yeah I I knew that person they just used me they hurt me I'm damaged uh, my parents projected their wishes and um, ego stuff onto me and I could never fulfill it and I feel inadequate and damaged. And that bastard teacher who was always humiliating me. And society telling me I should be other than the way I am. Have some self-compassion. Because all these forces are trying to destroy you. You know Spinoza talks about the mind trying to preserve itself. All these forces, you know, your bastard parents, your bastard teachers, your bastard partners, bastard society, <coughs> wants you to conform to their and its standards. It wants effectively to destroy you, to make you a component in a larger thing. You need to preserve your mind. And you can only do that through understanding. Uh, I covered that in the last podcast, actually. Proposition 64. Uh, no, not 64. 26 in part 4 of the ethics. So, if we have compassion for ourselves, we will say to ourselves, well, you know, the only thing I'm going to focus on is learning how to deal with my pain. And as I said in the last podcast, trying to get rid of the pain is the worst thing you can do. Uh, well, next to the worst thing, the actual worst thing you can do is to start blabbing positive affirmations or something, being total denial about your state. So, Number one, just acknowledge in the depths of your being that you are damaged goods. We're all damaged goods. It's not, this is not a, a critical statement. It's not a judgment. It's just a matter of fact. We're all damaged goods. So be kind to yourself. You can only be kind to yourself if you understand yourself. So never feel that there is some state or standard that you should live up to. Fuck all that. Religious, spiritual, 
self-help, psychological, societal standards. Never feel that you have to live up to any of those standards. So Spinoza's work was a work of great compassion. He just laid out the way our emotions work and how we can best deal with them to reduce our pain. And it's tricky stuff. But, as I've said before, there is only one thing you should be passionate about and that is yourself. All the rest of it can go to hell. And by having compassion for yourself, by understanding <coughs> that you are damaged goods, <coughs> and by becoming passionate about yourself in terms of dealing with your pain, then you are, as the alchemists would say, you are converting lead into gold. Although, don't let that be a, <laughs> some kind of requirement that you need to live up to either. Anyway, that's our lot. The world is brutal, harsh, unkind, disinterested, indifferent to uh, all of us. So we have to look after ourselves. So, just very briefly, number one, you need to acknowledge that you are, in yeah, any number of terms, fucked up, damaged, uh, a casualty of uh, life. And you then have to say to yourself, well, this is how I am. I shall learn to understand it. Well, I shall come to understand it. And number three, I will not comply with any artificially imposed standards by society or religion or religious folk or whatever, um, spiritual folk and so on. They can all go to hell. Anyway, this is the last podcast I'll do before Christmas. And if there's any message that is um, needed for Christmas for the whole fucking world is be kind to yourself have some compassion for yourself because Christmas is the time when most marriages break up when most people uh, commit suicide when people get into financial hardship you know, so on and so forth hopefully you, you will avoid all of that as I most certainly will <laughs> 